Promise Sports Panel here at the Steel Toad Group Pub on East Second, just off the Olympic Village. Uh, we're, we've spent a lot of time talking hockey and you know playoff hockey, lots going on, the draft lottery, but uh, hockey not the only game in town. The Whitecaps uh, now well into their MLS season, season that uh, has had a few more speed bumps ahead already out of the gates than I think they anticipated coming off a year last year where they finally hosted that first home playoff game. We thought that they would build on that, and they might ultimately, but uh, they're sort of taking the circuitous route to get uh, back on track here in the early going. Well, no, these last two weeks, I mean, this is really, a, they, they, it's a concentrated schedule, and I thought they had a great opportunity to send a message to the fan base that yeah you know we're over we're over our, our case of the vapors from early in the season and you know we are going to be the team people thought they were going to be it really hasn't turned out that way they even had the perfect building point that three nothing win that really flattered them to an illogical extent but you think this is the one this is the one this is the one where they jump off on this is the one that gives them a little confidence give their scores that little bit of mojo just hasn't happened yet and we're still sitting here waiting huge game coming up this Saturday Saturday against uh, uh, the, the Portland Timbers. And it's one of those, absolutely, one of those great Cascadia games that's uh, really become marquee games within the MLS world. Uh, that, that whole Seattle, Vancouver, Portland thing, uh, and now it's up to the Whitecaps to prove they belong. Patrick, I watched the game uh, from Yankee, from Yankee State. Yeah, that was so it, it was. I mean, I'm trying to watch the game, and I'm thinking to myself, I was distracted by the fact they were playing, and it was a compressed field, obviously, and that was an issue too. But you go out on the road, I mean, road goals are so valuable. They score a minute in, and yeah. you can't script a better start. They get two goals on the road, and they still can't win. Well, interesting. Uh, Carl Robinson took time out of practice on Tuesday, basically to berate his team for not taking seriously the little things. It, interesting that he doesn't do this very often, and he certainly. Mark, you know, Mark was wondering if he did it perhaps a bit for effect because everybody's watching. But in the end, the team that sounds like needs to get back to basics mm. because we can see it. You know, you mentioned the, the three goals. I mean, I, I called it schoolyard defending. And, just not, and, and I think they're a bit gun shy. We now see, you know, Kakuta Mane been banned for another game for, you know, I, I, people were up in arms over it. I don't know. It seemed like it was a pretty casual situation. Yeah, he made contact with the guy, but the ball is right there. He's trying to get out of the way. They, they feel gun shy. Seven guys now on the Whitecaps have been suspended this season in 11 games. It, it, it's, a, it's a difficult patch for them, and I, I think they need to figure out pretty quick what it is they're going to be doing on the field. Well, I hope they were working on penalty kicks because that was one of the poorliest struck. Is it poorliest? Is that a word? Yeah, I don't think okay, so. Okay, well, now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it, <laughs> terrible execution, but a great bounce. Blinders able to capitalize, jumps on the rebound, puts it in again. Things were going their way, and they still are unable to get the result that they were looking for. Uh, goal scoring continues to be an issue, and as we said too, uh, you know they're a different team when Kendall Waston's in the lineup. When he's out of the lineup, the problem is he can't stay in the lineup because you, know, you want that intimidating presence on the back end, the bull in the china shop. But his answer to everything is seems just to be the steamroll opponents. Yeah, yeah, no, and, I know. I mean, clearly he's on the MLS watch well, list. Well, and I think it's created this a, a, a bit of a character, or not a character, an identity issue within the team because last year, what's the strength of the team? The goaltending, the defense is fine, they're holding midfield, they're lava, and they'll get the one or two goals and, and beat you 2-1 or 1-0 or whatever it is. This year they haven't been able to do it. You know, and they've left Ostad out, out to dry, so they basically nullified their biggest advantage there as you say lost and is kind of a, a day to day concern. You just don't know how long he's going to last. Laba to me hasn't been the same player, and they brought in all these attacking players who haven't fit in, so it's just they're like a Mr. Potato Head doll right now. Like the ears don't match the eyes, don't match the arms, don't match the feet. And Robinson's going to have to do a hell of a coaching job, I think, to bring all this stuff together. I think Mr. Potato Head might have executed better uh, from the penalty spot. The uh, question now is, is it the best sporting entertainment in the city, or are we on uh, countdown to the return of real football? Uh, much ado about nothing, I think, in the grand scheme, but it's got us all talking. It certainly had people talking, that's for sure. And I think that was kind of the point from the Lions, to say, okay, let's let's... Let's say who, whose home is that really? They felt like it's been their home for a long time. The Whitecaps and the surfers in there. In the end, it comes about what's delivering on the field. And the Whitecaps, 
people are still showing up because they're enjoying the show. But yeah. the question is, they got to really start delivering on the field because they got to keep people coming back. That's certainly been the Lions' problem. They haven't been delivering on the field, and people have been looking for other things to do. Yeah, well, if the Lions want to make it their home, they better do something about it instead of talking about it. Because for years, that place was guaranteed win night for the BC Lions, and they have fallen off that. They've got to do a lot to rebuild their brand here, and they do more. And they need to do more than come up with a slogan. Well, whether it's the Lions, whether it's the Whitecaps. Just on the other side of this building here at BC Place, the home for both of those teams. And Steel Toad would be a great place to uh, start your day if you're coming to an event uh, downtown Vancouver at BC Place Stadium. We're at the Steel Toad Brew Pub on East 2nd, just off the Olympic Village. And uh, uh, you've got that look in your eye. Yeah, it you're is. I, I'm, I'm uh, thinking it's, it's a, a, and happy hour ends <laughs> probably within the next 45 well, minutes. Happy, that only gives so. me time to get three or four uh, in before I have to. Uh, take public transit home. I'll stop by the Steel Toad uh, the next time. You're on your way to a game at BC Place Stadium.